coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. Call your trophy goes to Osiris Rex team. Australia breaking ground on Boeing's AI Wingman factory. And Archer completes battery pack drop testing. And I'm your host, Tallinn Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric powered to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Call your trophy goes to Osiris Rex team. The National Aeronautic Association has awarded the 2023 Robert J. Collier Trophy to a NASA program that saw a prop head to an asteroid and back on the Osiris Rex mission. The mission stands for Origins Spectral Interpretation, Resource Identification, and Security Regolith Explorer. The Robert J. Collier Trophy has been awarded annually since 1911 for the, quote, greatest achievement in aeronautics or astronautics in America with respect to improving the performance, efficiency, and safety of air or space vehicles, the value of which has been thoroughly demonstrated by actual use during the preceding year, end quote. The NAA is proud to present this year's Collier Award to the OSIRIS-REx team. Jim Alba, NAA board chair, said, quote, their seven-year journey to an asteroid and back will help mankind better understand the universe in which we live. The complexity of this mission and the technologies applied certainly warrant this recognition." End quote. Robert Lightfoot, president of Lockheed Martin Space, said, quote, In the true embodiment of the Collier Trophy spirit, our team, together with our partners, approached every step of OSIRIS-REx with the resolve, tenacity, and creativity necessary to execute this mission of unlocking the mysteries of our universe. End quote. After the break, UAVionics gains FAA contract for BV loss study. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. UAVionics gains FAA contract for BV loss study. UAVionics has been awarded a broad agency announcement contract from the FAA to, quote, advance the commercial use of uncrewed aircraft systems in the national airspace system, end quote. The contract looks to create a reliable command and control network for BV loss ops across terrain with greater vertical development and variation than existing networks allow. UAVionics has joined hands with the University of Alaska Fairbanks UAS test site. They'll start with their proprietary link executive manager to fuse LTE, Iridium SATCOM, and C-band communication links into a single, uninterrupted, reliable link to aircraft in flight. Vertical Flight Society Issues 2024 Awards the Vertical Flight Society announced $120,000 in scholarships to 29 students, each selected as one of, quote, the world's most talented engineering students interested in vertical flight, end quote. The organization continues its modestly sized scholarship program in an effort to continually foster the next generation of hyper-capable, strident supporters of the somewhat niche flight industry. Traditionally, there just wasn't the amount of interest in helicopter operation, design, and engineering like there was for fixed-wing aircraft. 
That's been shaken up with the advent of so many electric VTOL aircraft releasing today. Northrop Grumman promises it's the right one for the job. Northrop Grumman published a little bit of cheerleading on its corporate site, promising that it can retain a technological edge against advancing laggards turned peers in the ever-advancing race of tech supremacy. It seems like a promise to stakeholders, investors, and taxpayers that we all just need to throw some more money into the development furnace in order to make up for years of underinvestment in hypersonic missiles. While few are eager to admit so aloud, it's been an embarrassment to watch Russian and Chinese hypersonics perform on the battlefield. Reliable Robotics Chosen for AFWorks Funding Increase Reliable Robotics has been selected for the USAF AFWorks Tactical Funding Increase Program, granting them additional funding in their efforts to, quote, facilitate the delivery of strategic capabilities for the Department of the Air Force, end quote. Reliable Robotics says it was, quote, competitively chosen for the award from a large list of providers during the funding evaluation, end quote, but there may not have been too much competition given how mature, polished, and operable their remote piloted caravan is. Selection under the funding increase is accompanied by an SBIR Phase 3 contract. That's it for today's Next Gen Minute. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Australia breaking ground on Boeing's AI wingman factory. The Australian program to add Boeing's MQ-28 Ghostbat drone has led to the creation of a nigh 100,000-square-foot facility in Toowoomba, Queensland. The Aussies jumped at integrating the MQ-28 into their Air Force much more readily than Boeing's own homeland did, embarking on the program as a joint venture between their own MOD and Boeing's Australian subsidiary. They expect the factory to be up and running in the next three years, including carbon fiber composites manufacture, robotic assembly for major sections on the aircraft, and finally assembly for the Ghost Bat. The MQ-28 falls along that very recent fad of having a loyal wingman in the form of an allied AI-powered UAV flying alongside crewed fighters to provide some extra oomph at a lower price point than full-size aircraft of their own type. Certainly, battles in Eastern Europe have taught some worthwhile lessons in uncrewed combat, which seem to be sinking in throughout the Western procurement system. Unmanned systems can be cheaper and more effective when wielded correctly, but in order to really get them there, the tech has to filter down many developments from COTS sources and distill them into a workable, military-ready, and secure platform. After these messages, Archer completes battery pack drop testing. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Welcome back. Archer completes battery pack drop testing. Archer Aviation announced the successful completion of testing on its battery packs, evaluating their ability to withstand drops without failure and rupture. The test saw their midnight aircraft's batteries dropped at various charge states from totally dead to 100% from a 50-foot height. Archer reports that they all tanked the hits just fine and continued to function properly. The test was expected to be one of the most challenging of the tests used to winnow out weaknesses of the aircraft, and Archer sounds relieved to have it in the rear view. For aircraft, it is doubly important to ensure they can take some pretty brutal hits without rupturing their cells. 
Archer's aim is to replace one to one and a half hour automotive commutes with the midnight, which would make the same jaunt in less than 20 minutes by air. The battery packs are key to making that plan come to fruition, and they'll be used in a pretty consistent cycle of full charge, discharge, swap, recharge, and so on until they're replaced by the next unit. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.